welcome back to another, a new, new episode of Excalibur CCG TV's Talking Comics. I'm Olivia. Mark. And my, this part of my, my face is numb. And it goes to my ear. And a little bit up here. It, I don't, half of my tongue. Just half of it. This is for the week of February 5. Yep. I'll start. Okay. Agretsuka number one from Oni Press Inc. with Daniel Barnes and DJ Kirkland. Sanrio and Oni Press join forces to bring Agretsuko to comics for the first time. Do you know who she is? Okay. Yeah. Well, Agretsuko, the hit Netflix show in production for season three, stars. Retsuko the Red Panda, a young office worker stuck in a thankless job, who only stress, whose only stress release is singing heavy metal at the local karaoke joint. Mm -hmm. I feel like he could self identify. Uh, well, <laughs> I've never done karaoke in my life, but what? Well, yeah. Other, With the help, releases. With the help of her friends, can she ever find the job satisfaction she craves? Not to mention adventure, the approval of her mother, and even. Hello? I feel like you'd like a Gretsuko because it's going to be cute, but she's so angry all the time. Well, I, I, I don't have Netflix, so I can't. But I'll look at the comic. I'll check the comic out. Alrighty, uh, from Marvel Ant Man 1 of 5, written by Zeb Wells, art by Dylan Burnett. Scott Lang is back and doing better than ever. Er, at least according to him, but his daughter Stinger and the ant hill he's living in say otherwise. Wait, he's is Stinger her, her actual name? I thought... Stinger Lang? Stinger Lang. Okay. Or is that like her, like, superhero name? I have no idea. I didn't even... I, okay. I didn't know his daughter was old enough to... Okay. I don't know. To say otherwise? otherwise? Yeah. Yeah. He's living in Ant Hill? Is he like. An Ant Hill gang. Tiny ant? Like tiny size? Oh, probably. Like Ant Man size? Probably. I would. That would be my guess, but it's a funny book, so you never know. It could be gigantic ants. It's Giant a funny ants. book? Yeah. Okay. It is a funny book. Alright, desperate to raise his daughter's opinion of him, Scott takes. A job from local beekeepers, <laughs> only to undercover a global conspiracy. You see why I call it a funny book. He's living in an ant hill and he's consulting. It's like bee movie. Exactly. I never saw that. Oh, um, well, it, uh, that's what was fun. Yeah. yeah, and he's like, "Oh my God, they're taking our honey. We gotta sue humanity." <laughs> sue bee honey. That's a real brand. Mm -hmm. uh, that could topple the world order. No time to call the Avengers. This sounds like a job for Ant-Man. Maybe more Oni Press. Wow. Back backtrack. Number one from from Brian Yones. Okay. And Jake Elphick. Guilt weighs heavy on former criminal Wheelman Allison. What's a wheel man? That's a driver. Oh. Uh, Getaway driver. Who led an illicit life that left her shattered into pieces. Shattered into pieces. But when she hears about a massive cross history car race that grants the winner a chance to correct a single mistake in their life, Allison will drive from the Big Bang to the death knell of the universe for the grand prize. That's an interesting concept. Mm -hmm. Oh, backtrack because you're on a track in the suit going back in time to fix yeah. a mistake. Wait, so do you think cross history car race? Do you think he would like travel through history? Because I thought it was just a car race in modern day, but you have cars from the 50s versus cars from like versus like a Tesla, like a Ford T1 versus like a 2019 Tesla. Well, since she drives going from, in a race. from the Big Bang to the end of the universe, I guess it's a. 
travel through. I guess it's the a time. Yeah, but I don't know what they drive. Okay, then that's more interesting. Yeah. That there's still actual time travel, not just a single car race. <laughs> yeah. Captain America. Oh, I already read it. Oops. That's yours. Oh, okay. Well, see spoilers. Captain America: The End, number one of one. Did we talk about any of the other The End books? Well, yeah, me and Rick. Oh, last week. that's yeah. why. Um, Marvel Comics, written and arted by Eric Larson, the Savage Dragon Eric, Eric Larson. Steve Rogers fights for survival in a post-apocalyptic wasteland populated by hordes of red skulls. Multiple red skulls. Yep, and that's all. That's all they say. So. I don't look at the end. Where did they sound cool? I don't usually read those. Well, I didn't know if they sounded cool. From the they never really sound cool to me, but I don't know. Conan, Battle for the Serpent Crown, number one. Did that not already start? The Serpent Crown, I guess it was a prequel to this one started and finished, so this one's going to continue, I guess. Number five, Marvel, uh, Saladin Ahmed and Luke Ross. Conan wanders the desert as he reaches, and as he reaches the city, no... Stig Stygian. Stygian Temple nor Vendihan Vendihan Fortress greets him. No, something far stranger. The lights of fabulous Las Vegas. <laughs> Conan is far from home and it's time for him to tread the thrones of the Marvel the Tread the Thrones of the Marvel Universe under his sandaled feet. They screwed that up, but that's okay. The city of sin. I know Sin City. Yeah. That's what the Frank, Frank Miller is just the beginning uh, for Conan's solo jaunt as the barbarian finds himself on a quest for a relic that predates even his Hyborian age, the Serpent Crown of a Atlantis. But will his battle for the crown earn Conan his own kingdom, or doom him to a nefarious trap set forth by Mephisto? In all caps, because the first Conan was in all caps. Featuring a wide array of Marvel heroes and villains, this is an adventure you can't afford to miss. So not just Conan villains, but like other villains. That sounds, uh, that sounds kind of cool. Mm. Yeah. I we'll feel see. like. But him alone doing it. Yeah, that's better. Although it sounds like he's gonna have some team ups along the way. Did it? Well, wide array of Marvel heroes. Oh, Marvel and, heroes and villains. Yeah, uh, so I'm sure he'll team up with somebody. Alrighty, again from Marvel. This is um, an Age of Conan, I'm assuming. Even though it's not from the Age of Conan. Dark Agnes, number one of five. Written by Becky Clinton, art by Luca Pizzeria. Pizza Pizzari. Pizzari. Okay. I'm hungry for pizza. I'm always hungry. Well, well. Forced into an arranged marriage, Agnes de Chastillon took matters into her own violent hands to free herself from the yoke of a life she never wanted. Now the woman known as Dark Agnes. Dark Agnes, along with her mercenary partner, Etienne Villiers. Make their way through 16th century France. As sell swords on their way to join the wars in Italy, where the real money is. What's a sell sword? They, they mercenary. Yes. Okay. Um, but when Etienne is captured by the Duke of Alencon's forces and set for execution, it's up to Dark Agnes to save the day. But what evil designs are being enacted on Agnes, and will she doom herself by saving Etienne? Will she? See, I saw Dark Agnes and assumed it was just another uh, kill. Kill, kill. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's a Robert E. Howard character that it's complicated, but it's kind of what Red Song is based on. DC Crimes of Passion. Mm -hmm. Another one of their reboots. Nope. Not at all. James <coughs> Tinyanev and Various and Greg Smallwood and Various. 
It's DC Comics, because it's DC Crimes of Passion. Passion! Betrayal! Murder! Wait, murder? Murder. When you're a private investigator, these are the things you experience daily. But when you add capes to the mix, like Batman, Catwoman, and Harley Quinn, things get even messier. The name Slam Bradley. <laughs> The name's Slam. Slam Bradley. And I'm telling you that this year's Valentine's Day special has more intrigue than you can shake a stick at, but it's coming out, like, a week before Valentine's Day. See, they could have done it all out, because in the 12th Valentine's Day, in that easy Valentine's Day, the 12th. The 14th. Oh, 14th, okay. Well, they could have put it out on the 12th and it been closer. Ten Tales of Love, the kind of love that make you push people over the edge. Don't miss it, or I'll make you pay. <laughs> Slam Bradley is gonna make you pay. Slam Bradley. I like yeah. that name. That's a funny name. Alrighty. Oh. So it's Terry Ferguson. That's ah! Funny. Oh, it's gone. Hold on. I can't see. Technical difficulty. Nope. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> Alright, from Marvel. Immortal Hulk, Great Power Number One. Written by Tom Taylor. Art by Jorge Molina. George. Jorge. When Bruce Banner wakes up in the middle of the night without the Hulk, he thinks he's finally free. But the Hulk is immortal, and the night's not over yet. How do you wake up without the Hulk? You wake up as yourself? I guess. I don't know. Or can you like feel? Oh, well, isn't he like a like he can hear him in his head? I maybe really? yeah. I haven't read it in a long time, so I don't know what's going on with that. Okay. If you thought he was dangerous in the body of mild-mannered Bruce Banner, wait till you see him now. Peter Parker is a man with the proportional strength and agility of a spider, capable of lifting trains on his bad days, and he's about to get a big green power up with a temper to match. He's like a poltergeist. No, he's just zooming around. <laughs> a poltergeist? Yeah. A ghost? Yeah. Oh, but the he's Hulk? Like, he's like possessing them. I guess so, yeah. And so, somehow he can transfer the the gamma radiation into somebody else, too. I don't know. It's I don't know the gamma radiation is what he's made out of. He's, he's a, a gamma ghost. ghost. He's, he's like a gamma slimer. ghost. Slimer. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't Slammer possess somebody at one point? He makes him feel funky, I know. I'm gonna read that one, that looks funny. Man who effed up time. Number one. Aftershock with John Lehman, that's the person, and Carl Mostert. Sean Bennett is just your everyday, ordinary lab worker in a high-tech lab with a prototype time machine. And yeah, he's got the same temptations any of us would have about going back in time. Just a bit, just a bit, to correct mistakes of the past and right old wrongs. So, when he, when he meets a version of himself from the future who encourages him to do just that, Sean takes the temporal plunge. Only, can you guess what happens next? Did you read the book title? Yup. All of time is F hash brown print uh F pound um percent ampersand and up now and it's up to Sean to correct it or else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's a dash in correct. That's odd. Okay. So it's to correct, to correct it, or else, because he wrecked it. Because he wrecked it. I don't know. I'm making that up. Well, <laughs> sounds good. Okay, back to Marvel. Marvel Avengers Hulk number one. Jim Zub and Ariel Olivetti. Ariel Olivetti doing a whole book. Wow. The adventure leading to Marvel's Avengers rages on with an all-new story leading directly into the events of the highly anticipated video game. He uh, gets his own video game. That sounds cool. Well, yeah. I don't know who's anticipating it, but I'm sure someone I never is. heard that it was happening. Well. But E3 hasn't happened yet, so that's probably why. 
<laughs> As the Incredible Hulk, the monstrous alter ego, scientist Bruce Banner, he's done good for the world. But with the virtually uncontrollable gigantic green rage monster always bubbling under his skin, Banner has teamed up with an inquisitive scientist in an attempt to regulate the beast once and for all. God, that was a long sentence. As their experiments go deeper, a catastrophic event may spell the end for more than just Banner's curse. Wow. That was a He's a curse that you cast on other people. A cur there you go. So... Which is cursed to be Spider Hulk. Predator Hunters 3, number one of four, with Dark Horse Comics, Chris Warner, and Brian Fees. Maybe it's thighs. Fees. Rafael Herrera was a drug runner until the fateful night when his men were wiped out by an unearthly monster. Now as part of the Predator Hunters team, Herrera's worst night worst memory is reborn. Cartel soldiers are being wiped out in the jungles of Central America. And that means the Pred is that's why they have the dreadlocks. The Predators and Dreadlocks. Okay. Because they're in Central America. That means like Mexico. Right? Well, it's Central America is underneath. It's between Mexico and South America. Between North America and South America, it's Central America. Well, it's like North America, Mexico, Central America, and South America. Okay. And that means. Uh, and that means the predators have returned! Exclamation point. This story links back to Dark Horse's first Predator series from 1987! Exclamation point. You can find that on our eBay. Yes. The original one, just on eBay, under us, our name. Excalibur CCG. Or I think it's Excalibur Comics CG. Is it? I think. Okay. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> My favorite. But you should know all the characters, because there's only like two. Yeah, well, okay. That's true. Star Wars... Darth and none Vader, of them are in one. all caps. That's true. So yeah, none, none, Star of this, Star wow. none of this is all worse. None of this in caps. That's true. Wow. This is not an important series then. Nothing's in caps. Another Darth Vader number one. Written by Greg Pak. And art by Raphael Ainko. Alright, in the shattering climax of The Empire Strikes Back, Darth Vader infamously reveals his true relationship to Luke Skywalker and invites his son to rule the galaxy at his side. But Luke refuses, plunging into the abyss beneath Cloud City rather than turn to the dark side. We all remember Luke's utter horror in this life-altering moment. But what about Vader? In this new epic chapter of the Darth Vader saga, the Dark Lord grapples with Luke's unthinkable refusal and embarks on a bloody mission unthinkable of refusal. unthinkable <laughs> refusal. He never thought he would refuse. Never considered it. Poor Darth. Embarks on a bloody mission of rage-filled revenge against everything and everyone who had a hand in hiding or corrupting and corrupting his only son. Even as he uncovers the secrets of Luke's origins, Vader must face shocking new challenges from his own dark past. How would Luke have been corrupted? I have no idea. Because he was corrupted by the Jedi. It's, I guess. It's but he was Jedi. But I he guess. Was, he was Sith. Because he didn't like the... No, he didn't. X-Men, Fantastic Four, number one of four from Marvel. This one looks cool, the Ellie Spot art, because it's Dodds. The Dodds. Yeah, it's pretty. Hello? Oh, okay. Um, Chip Zdarsky and Terry Dodds. Oh, they're doing the whole art. Ooh, Ooh. I thought it was just a cover. Ooh, that's even better. Krakoa! Woohoo! Every mutant on Earth lives there. Except for one. But now it's time for Franklin Richards to come home. It's the X-Men versus the Fantastic Four, and nothing will ever be the same. Never, never, ever. Are they on same. Krakoa because they've been kicked out? I have no idea. Or did they like, I thought they went there because they liked it there and like they could escape the prejudice, not because they had to live there. But I like I, it was cool. That he, oh, that Franklin Richards isn't just a superhero 
the super power person, he's a mutant. He's a mutant. I guess because he was born with it. Yeah. Because he's not Mabel and he was born with it. <laughs> yep. Sure. And that's it. For the number ones. For that week. Next week. This week. Okay, let's talk about old books. Okay. Uh, you do it. Okay, I'll do it. Speaking of Fantastic Four, we just got this in. This is like, you know, it's not hot off the press any, anymore because we've had it for a couple. If you smell really hard, you can smell Kirby's cigar. It's Fantastic Four. Epic Collection, Volume 3. This covers um, up through... Let's, 33 to 51 issues, which is, it's got Dragon Man, and it's got a Tuma. Dragon Man? He's yeah. cool. And, um, it's a got the Inhumans, and most importantly, it's got the Galactus, the Saga Galactus, and the Silver Surfer. And, it's here. And you can come down here and buy it, right now. Do it. Do it. You will thank yourself, and I will thank you and we can keep the doors open. So, um, this is from November, but you know what is still cool? Crone! Like, what if Red Sonya got old? But before she got old, like, hey, I'm Red Sonya, and, or, I, I don't remember her name right now. I don't see it. Obviously, but there's a rogue, and there's a barbarian, except, um, he's called Vor the Lion. Okay. And, um, Gaspar Rogue. Gaspar. Um, and then her name... I don't know, her sword is, na her sword is named Morgenstorm. Morgenstorm? Morgenstorm. And then the evil guy that they're fighting, um, is called Decade. D. Apostrophe. Cade. Um... And then, uh oh, he's about to come back. Uh oh. We have to go fight him. Okay. That's what they do. It's cool. <laughs> it's still not. But it feels fine. Yeah. My ear's not numb anymore, though. Well, that's good. Can you hear now? I could hear. I just felt Yes, well that's it for our show, and we have the... Riz isn't here, but yesterday I went to his apartment. That's cute. I've never been there. To his new one, newer one. Just when he used to live across, uh, above Dean, across from Dean. Way back in the day. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Well, it is there. And... There's something about Twitters and Facebooks and stuff. Uh-huh. And um, two locations. We got phone yeah. numbers. Uh, check out our website. Yes. Do that. It's updated with cool stuff every week. Mm-hmm. He does it. Some of it. Some of it. He does some of it. I do some of it. I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> Probably most of it. Um, like, share, subscribe. Hit the bell for a notification every time we post a new video and comment down below. Yes. All that. It's a lot to ask, but it's worth it. That's it. Bye. See ya.